Hey guys, and welcome to this Amadeo Compositions tutorial. This is tutorial number 32 in the first Steps in Preparation series. We just recently finished, um, at least for now, working with the compositor, and we are now going to take a look at materials and textures. First uh, off, um, materials, okay? But in order to use them, we are first of all going to take a look at what materials are, how they work, what is light, and how does light behave a little bit, okay? So today we're not going to work with uh, Blender, but we're going to work with GIMP, okay? We're not going to do ac actually something in GIMP, I'm just going to use it as a pre presentation um, device, so to say. So uh, let's take a look at this. What you can see here is an eye. This is a very uh, simplified version of an eye, my childish drawings here. Uh, you can see a light source uh, and some other things. So basically what we have to ask ourselves first as artists is what is light, how does it behave? And, or more importantly, how do we interpret it, okay? And the reason why we see colors is not because there are actually colors on the materials, but because light that has a certain frequency um, appears to us to have a certain color, okay? Um, yeah, red is quite low frequency, blue is quite high frequency, and everything in between. Now, what exactly happens? Here you can see a light source, this could be the sun, this could be um, a light bulb, or this could also be a material that is reflecting light, doesn't really matter. It, we, can, we can see it with our eyes because it, the light travels into our eyes, through our lens, and then hits our retina, which, which is kind of like um, a, thin, a thin layer of skin, which has cells in it that are able to interpret light. Okay, and... Um, once again, this is a very simplified version, but it shows what actually happens. Now, light is basically um, a mix-up or something we cannot quite um, grasp between um, a frequency and particles, okay? And those particles are called, called photons. If they hit our retina, then they do the following. Um, in our retina, there is there are molecules, which are called retinal molecules, and they look something like this. This is a, not a very good drawing. What matters is that once it hits this molecule, this part switches up and then this is no longer bent but it's actually straight and because this straight version uh, inhabits less energy it means that their um, energy gets free once this happens and that extra amount of energy will then be transported as electricity um, through this um, nerve of ours that then connects to the brain and in the brain the image or whatever we see uh, gets interpreted uh, yeah this is a very basic explanation on how that works so the important thing to note here is that our eye is not actively um, seeing something, okay? It's not like our eye sends out rays that then um, interpret the environment, but the light rays automatically travel into our eyes and we can therefore see something, okay? Uh, if you're interested in that, Google it because there is a lot of valuable information like why are things um, blurred because, uh, you know, if the lens doesn't uh, properly what it's supposed to do and so on. Now, um, let's take a look at materials. All these things can be considered materials. Let me just um, do something real quick here. Oh, I need to select. Here we go. Okay, so we have a rock, or what's something that's supposed to be a rock. We've got water, we've got glass, We've got hair, we've got skin. All those things can be considered materials in terms of 3D, okay? The reason why they, those materials appear different to us is because they um, treat light differently, okay? Glass lets uh, light rays pass and it refracts them. Rocks, um, they don't r let anything pass. Those are just, this rock is usually a very diffuse um, surface. Uh, not, not a lot of highlights, if it's rough rock at least. Water is also um, transparent, similar to glass. Um, it also reflects uh, the light, which is why you get um, more severe sunburns when you're bathing than when you're just, uh, you know, not in the water. We've got hair, which is kind of shiny if it's beautiful hair. We've got skin that actually uh, has subsurface scattering going on where light kind of scatters below the surface of the skin and so on and so forth. So all those things are different kind of materials and they behave differently. And now we are going to take a look at where the difference is, okay? 
And today we're going to focus on absorption, reflection and emission. And in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, refraction, transparency, subsurface gathering and that kind of stuff. So let's say we have an object. This is supposed to be a sphere. Um, now, that sphere by itself doesn't do anything, okay? Um, if right now we would have an eye right here, this eye wouldn't see a thing, because although the object is here, is, there are no light rays bouncing off um, that surface, okay? So in order for us to see anything, we need some kind of light source. Let's say we have this kind of lamp here. This could once again be the sun, or a light bulb, or... Um, any kind of, of light source, okay? Now, why do we actually see something? Let's first of all take a look at um, what happens with those light rays. They obviously hit the surface of this object, right? Now, a couple of different things can happen to those light rays. The first one, and also the most obvious one, and the one that's most important to us as um, 3D artists, is that the light bounces off the surface, okay? The, the, the light rays hit the surface, they bounce away. Some of them hit our eyes so we can actually see those rays. Some of those rays go into the opposite direction, they don't do anything. Or at least we cannot, we, of course they do something, they could for example illuminate other parts next to it, but they don't really do anything um, to our eye, unless they bounce back in some way. So they are basically lost information. Then the next thing is absorption, okay? The light rays hit the surface, but not all of them bounce away. Some bounce away, like this, some bounce away, but some of the other ones, they are actually being absorbed. What that means is that, that they transfer their energy onto the surface, and you can see those red dots, they are supposed to um, stress that the surface um, has then more energy, it becomes warmer. Okay, you can see this delta T, which means that the temperature changes of the surface. Now, those light rays, they no longer um, are being emitted to the, to the environment. But uh, if this, but if this um, surface heats up, then, some, then that means that the particles or just the, the single atoms, they actually, um, they vibrate more strongly. And therefore, um, some of that heat then gets lost to the environment by um, transferring it to the air. But some of that temperature also gets emitted through infrared um, rays. Okay, that's also light. Infrared are also right uh, are also light, but they are not visible because they have a very low frequency. Okay, so heat that you can feel when you go close to um, a fire, for example, is not necessarily warm air, but it can also be infrared rays that hit your hit your hand, but you cannot see them. Some animals, like for example snakes. They can not really see uh, heat, probably, but they can sense it in another way than we can with uh, specific organs. Now, um, yeah, now uh, those wires here—they they do not really have anything to do with this um, presentation, but with the next thing. So let's say we have emission going on, and you can see this looks like a little bit like a sun. So let's just uncheck our lamp for now. And let's also uncheck our uh, adsorption. Here we go. Now you can see what happens here. We have a, let's say this is a metal um, ball, okay? And we've got a, a positive wire and a negative wire. So just for electricity's sake, okay? So now electrons are being pumped through this um, this metal, metal ball. And this metal ball heats up, okay? And as you might know, if you have... Um, a metal ball heating up, not much happens usually. Uh, it, you don't really see it. But if you have enough electricity, it starts to glow, okay? If it becomes really, really hot, like about 1000 degrees or something, or even already by 700, um, it starts to glow. And what basically happens is not something very different, okay? Usually if you heat it up, at first only infrared and only low frequency waves are being emitted. But at some point, if you have enough electricity, or enough power, it becomes so hot it actually also emits um, rays that are have a higher frequency that are within our range of vision, okay, from red to blue, okay? And if you have very, very hot materials, like for example the sun, the frequencies are so high that you actually also have 
ultraviolet lights that can actually um, damage your skin. So those are very high frequency, very high energy rays. This is actually the only way to generate light, okay? Every light you can see is in some way generated from a emitting a body, either the sun or a light bulb. In the light bulb, it's actually um, a thread of a Wolfram that uh, is being heated up until it glows in a very bright white light or in a LED light emitting diet or whatever. So now, um, next thing is, what happens if we have um, an emitting um, body? This is probably the most simple way of us seeing something. This um, body is emitting light. The light. Some of the light rays hit our eye, they hit our retina, they um, change the molecules and we can then see something. Okay. And you can also create this kind of effect in CG, of course. We even need it quite often. But it's not the most important thing. The most important thing for CG is the indirect light, so to say. So let's hide the uh, emission and let's turn on specular rays for now. And our lamp, we also need our lamp. So what happens? We have, let me just zoom in here. We have our light source. Light rays are being emitted. They hit the surface of our object and they, they then they bounce away, okay? And the way they do that is as follows. We have basically this line. Let me just um, post the recording real quick. Okay, so if we look at this ray over here, you can see it hits the surface in this point. Okay. And from this point, you can see this is basically the surface normal vector. It's the normal vector that is exactly facing away from the surface, okay? And this is not very well drawn right now, but you can basically see an angle over here, which let's call this one alpha, and let's call this one beta. And those angles are the same, okay? If a light ray hits the surface, it bounces away from that surface in the same angle as it hit the surface, basically, as you can see over here. So that's basic theory. Now, obviously, only the rays that hit a spot on the sphere that then only those rays that actually then bounce into our eyes can be seen. The other rays cannot be seen by us, okay? So in this case, you could say that we would see something from, let's say, maybe from over there to maybe, I'm just going to assume something to over here, okay? All the rays that hit the surface within this area can then be um, seen and interpreted by our retina that can then be seen by us. All the other rays, they simply disappear. So in the end, we will get a kind of like a white dot in this area, which looks, looks something like this. The rest of the sphere appears black. But as you might know, if, if you look at any kind of... Um, object around you, you don't have any black spots at all. So even those, this area that is not being illuminated like directly, according to this model, even that area can be seen, okay? So let's turn off the specularity, let's turn off the specular rays, and let's take a look at something that's called diffusion, or just not diffusion, but just the diffuse part of that light, so to say. So let's take a look at the surface first of all. You can see this is like um, a close-up view of the surface. It appears very smooth over here, but if you take a very close look, you can see it's very, very rough. There are no perfectly smooth surfaces, at least not in real life. You can simulate them in a computer, of course, but in real life there are no smooth surfaces. So if we zoom in a little more. Now, sorry about the um, resolution here, but you can see what happens. We have different light rays, and they all touch the surface at the exact same angle. Okay, you can see they're par parallel to each other. Now this red light ray, I just made it red for our presentation purposes, is how it should usually look. Now it's not perfect, but you can see once again, if we have like the surface normal like this, um, let me just select that if we have a surf surface normal like this, 
you once again see this angle, alpha, and this angle, which is supposed to be beta, are the same. Okay, so that's what you'd expect. And if all the rays would behave exactly like this, then you'd get this specular highlight we just talked about earlier. But that's not true because this is a very rough surface. So some of the rays, they bounce back more or less as you'd anticipate, but other rays, for example this one, which hits this um, special part of the surface, it bounces back at a completely different angle. So now, if the eye would be over here, you could see this light ray, although it shouldn't be able, we shouldn't be able to see it. Same goes for um, some other light rays that, for example, would hit here or over here or wherever. There's um, an un uneven surface. Now, this light ray more or less does what we expected. Because it just so happens to hit a place on the surface that um, is pretty much um, the same as the general um, surface um, shape, so to say. Okay? Now, what happens is that we get the light rays like this. You can see I, al I always drain two rays that more or less go into the same direction. One of them bounces in this direction, which is not supposed to happen because it should go over there. And the other one goes over here, which is even worse. Same goes over here. Same goes for here. You can see those rays, they don't behave as you'd expect them to. Also over here and over here. And that's because of the surface roughness in a way. So in the end, you can see two, two different kinds of phenomena, so to say. You can see, let's once again turn on the specular rays. The specular rays, which behave exactly as you'd think they do, and they generate this specular highlight. But then you also have the diffusion pass, and that looks like this. You can see, even though only a few rays from over here can actually bounce back into our eyes, we can still see it a bit brighter than the rest, so you get this kind of even illumination. Okay, And in CG, especially in Blender, we do it the exact same way. We have a way to manipulate the specular highlight, and we have a way to manipulate the diffuse part. Okay, um, Cool. Now there is one more thing to keep in mind. We have a total amount of light rays, or a total amount of energy. Okay. And as you might know, energy cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed, it can only be um, converted into a different kind of energy. So right now we have emission, or no, actually we don't have emission, sorry. We have absorption, and we have the different reflection types. And all those rays together make up 100% of the light intensity, okay? That means that if we have a very, very strong specular reflections, that means that we have a very smooth surface, which means we have less diffuse reflection going on. If we have a lot of absorption, like on a black body, on a black um, surface, a lot of light is being absorbed and emitted as infrared rays, and therefore the um, body appears very dark, because we do no longer have enough rays to make up for a decent diffusion and specular pass, specular channel, okay? So keep that in mind, if you have a very very bright diffuse channel, you should choose your specular path to be less bright because um, you're obviously simulating a rougher surface and because you're simulating a rougher surface, more light rays bounce in weird directions all over the place and only a few light rays can actually be um, gathered according to the standard model, so to say. And one other thing, what is specularity? Basically specularity and diffusion are the exact same thing, just that uh, in CG we're taking, we're separating them, so it's easier to manipulate them. Okay, but both are actually light rays that are bounce off a surface in different ways. And one more thing, um, reflections according to mirroring. Okay, you also have a mirror option to create a mirror in Blender. It's also the same thing. It's also light rays that bounce away from the surface. Just a very smooth, a very very smooth surface that actually even reflects light rays, or that actually reflect them in a visible way if they are not from a light source but also from a other object okay so in the end we have all those kinds of um all those different kinds of um you know ways that light rays can come from an object that can um be emitted from an object that can bounce off an object surface and so on and all that together creates an image that we can then interpret and that then can, in some cases, create a feeling of realism. 
and I'm not sure what kind of look you want to go for in Blender. You can also go for a cartoonish look, of course, but at least I sometimes try to actually get a realistic result, and then you need to consider all those things, and maybe you were able to create realism, which is also kind of one of the holy grails in CG. So, um, that's it for this part. In the next part, we're going to take a look at transparency and subsurface gathering. So, like, glass has transparency and uh, refraction going on, water does, the human skin has refraction because the light kind of breaks or refracts below the surface, and there's a lot of stuff, stuff um, that we did not yet cover, so yeah, stay tuned for that, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, if you have any kind of questions or comments, as always, post them in the comment section below the videos, thank you for watching, and see you next time.